Hey everyone, I just wanted to give you a little tour of our campus here on the Yucatan Peninsula in southern Mexico. And let's start right here in our canteen where our colleagues Francisco and Juanita cook for our entire team. And right behind our canteen are our first residential areas. Of course, the vast majority of our colleagues come from the surrounding villages and they of course live at home. But some of us do come from further away and we get to live directly here on campus. For instance, my room is right here. As you can see, the spa facilities are rather limited. I sleep in a hammock just like everyone else around here because even on those super hot nights, you get nice cool air from all sides. It's really the best way to sleep. But before I take a little nap, let's finish the tour. And this right here is where my colleague Fernando lives and my colleague Elder. And just here around the corner is another room where Anna, a PhD student from Imperial College London, lives at the moment. And we all live here at the edge of the little village of Constitución, which um, starts right here, which has about a thousand inhabitants. And this other road and this other direction is also really important to us because about a kilometer behind me is where our research site is. It's about 90 hectares where we run many of our larger experiments. And a little further back even is where many of our restoration sites are and the Balamku Ecosystem Reserve. But some of our other restoration sites are a little further away, up to 300 kilometers from here. And if we just cross to the other side of the road, here we've got another house where some more of our colleagues live, like Ricardo, our research coordinator, Samantha, our restoration project reviewer for our Plan for the Planet platform. And here on the veranda is where we like to spend a lot of the afternoons after work playing uh, card games and um, board games, especially on those days when we have power outages because these power outages also lead to internet outages and phone network outages. When that happens, there's absolutely no way to communicate and connect with the outside world and you never know how long they last. Sometimes it's just minutes, other times it's, it's hours, up to 10 hours with no real connection to the outside world. And right behind us here, we have another important place. This is our shade house. Um, this is really important for our research. We run a lot of experiments here, like figuring out how droughts impact the different tree species we plant and how different soils affect that drought tolerance of these species. So that's really important, but this place is actually even more important to us during the rainy season, the planting season, because um, after the, the seedlings that we plant are delivered from the nursery, but before they can actually be planted, what we need to do is make sure that each one of the planting teams has the right species mix for the ecosystem. So the colleagues working here are basically like florists in a flower shop. They make sure that each planting team receives the exact right combination of different tree species for, for them to plant and to restore these ecosystems. And just behind us here, we have another important building this right here is our sample house. In this house, we prepare and store our soil and plant samples before they're sent to a lab for chemical analysis or genetic analysis. And actually the most important part of this house is this little room right here because it can be heated to um, 60 degrees and that allows us to dry soil and plant samples in it. So that's what that looks like. Let's, um, let's give this a chance to, to dry while we continue our tour. This place here behind me is our office. Of course, the vast majority of our colleagues actually work in the field all day. But we do have some colleagues, researchers, data scientists, restoration planners, and an accountant, of course, as well, that do work in an office, and all of that happens right here. And right behind me here, we actually have a wonderful artwork by a local artist, Ricardo, of the Pajaroto, a really important part of this ecosystem that we work in here. To grow those species we, um, we plant here, we, of course, need lots and lots of seeds. And for some species, these are super easy to acquire, but especially for those rare species, we have to collect them ourselves. 
and after they're collected in the field, but before they can be grown in the nursery, they need to be processed. Effectively, the seeds have to be taken out and removed from the fruits in which they're collected. And all of that work happens right here by our processing team. And this already takes us to the end of our tour. This is the end of our campus, but actually we're expanding it a little further right now. So let me show you that as well. Here on the other side of this little um, forest, we are building our research nursery. It'll have a capacity for about 200,000 seedlings. And what we're gonna be doing here is understanding how to grow those rare species that are rarely ever grown, um, but are very important to restore these forest ecosystems. So all that's gonna happen here, but it'll take a few months until the nursery is ready. And I'll update you then.